So, hello everyone, and welcome to episode 4 of the exploration of cryptids around the world. Today we are visiting Australia and Oceania. So, without further ado, let's get over to this creature, the Bunyip. The Bunyip is one of the most famous cryptids in Australian cryptozoology and folklore. It is said to resemble a hippopotamus-like dog, or in some cases, a sea-like, a seal-like canine. <coughs> Sightings of this mysterious aquatic creature date back to, as scientists estimate, 150 years ago. An account in 1851 from a newspaper called The Australian Australasian, sorry, stated a report that the bunyip had been sighted near the Murray River, eating a man. This would mean that it's likely to be carnivorous. It is estimated to be between 5 to 15 feet long. For those of you who don't understand feet, that's one and a half to five metres long. During the 19th century, Europe Europeans made early settlements in regions of Australia. Word quickly spread to the settlers about a mysterious creature called the bunyip, but the settlers took it lightly as another animal. They, these settlers are reasons why people, some people believe that the bunyip was inspired by the puka, a creature of Celtic folklore. From 1840 to 1850, the settlers extended their exploration of Australia, and upon doing so, numerous sightings of the bunyip were told in Victoria and New South Wales. In 1818, two men known as Hamilton Hume and James Meehan discovered some unusual fossils and bones at Lake Bathurst in New South Wales. Um, admittedly, the two did not skip directly to the conclusion of the bunyip, and instead reported their find to the PSA, the Philo Philosophical Society of Australia, where they were praised. Another pair of unusual fossils were found in New South Wales in 1830 at Wellington Caves by a man called George Rankin. So Richard Owen, an English paleontologist was quick to say that the fossils may have belonged to Notifarium micelli or Deprotodon optatum. In 1852, William Buckley published an autobiography on his experience with the Watherong people. He claimed that they told him stories of an amphibious and mysterious creature native to Lake Modaware and the Barwon River. Five years after this account, an English artist called Edwin Loftus created many artistic interpretations of the bunyip, some even based on his personal sightings of the creature. In 2017, BirdLife Australia published a hypothesis suggesting that the bunyip may have been influenced by an abnormal encounters with a southern cassowary. Four features, uh, four movies featuring the bunyip. Burrenjaw. Burrenjaw is commonly nicknamed as the Australian T-Rex, as many sightings de uh, describe a bipedal looking creature sighted in 1857, with a common theme with these sightings being that it kills cattle. Based on the fact that it is compared to a theropod dinosaur, Load, many of them being Tyrannosaurus rex, Allosaurus fragilis and Megaraptor, suggest that it is carnivorous, not to mention the fact that, it also, that sightings suggest that it feeds on cattle. Burren jaw is also estimated to be between 6 to 8 metres long, or 20 to 25 feet. The first claimed sighting of the Burren jaw took place in 1957 near the MacArthur River in Northern Territory of Australia. A rancher is having a normal day, just herding his cattle, when suddenly his cows get spooked by something in the woods. At first the rancher sees nothing, but soon enough he sees beady eyes focusing on his cattle, including him himself. Immediately a cow breaks free, running to the river via the woods. The rancher timidly retreats from the scene, and following his return to the site, he found half of the 50 cattle he had been herding just moments ago, half eaten. In 1978, this reported sighting of a creature reached the words of Brian Clark, an explorer and bushman. Brian set off into the woods, and momentarily found himself in the Urupunji area, with lots of cattle surrounding him. However, Brian Clark's expedition did eventually go pear-shaped as he got lost. 
Thankfully, Brian was found by a policeman. Despite being found, Brian told the police about an odd event that happened on his first night of this expedition. This was that, while trying to sleep, he heard immense, thunderous footsteps that he could, that could only be described as being like thunder. In 1980, a certain rancher known as Charles Waterman had a terrifying encounter. He saw the monster. Just like the original sighting in 1957, Charles's cattle had also been half-eaten, but this time Charles were, was persistent and kept watch of himself during the night. It was then when his life flashed before his eyes, a, pi a bipedal, lizard-like monster, Charles describes as being 20 foot or so long, has a cow in its mouth and it soon gingerly walks over to the river. The final sighting of the Burren Jaw so far was in 1985, when a family had travelled to the Roper River for a holiday, and they claimed to have seen a feathered creature take a walk near the lake. Now, there are many theories to what Burren Jaw could actually be. In picture one that I've just put up, this is an interpretation of Burren Jaw being depicted as Thylacolio, and a bipedal version of the marsupial lion. Picture two depicts Burren Jaw as a bipedal version of the extinct kangaroo known as Procoptodon. Picture three depicts Burren Jaw as being the most famous extinct bipedal dinosaur, that is Tyrannosaurus rex. And picture four comes from the book, oh sorry, comes from the novel The Ones We Can't See, and it depicts Burren Jaw being a megaraptor. So leave in the comments what you think is the best interpretation of Byron Jaw. The Blue Mountains Panther, also known as the Lithgow Panther. Sorry, there's a bit of a glitch. Also known as the Blue Mountains Panther, the Lithgow Panther is, supposed, is a supposed panther that has been spotted in and out of the Blue Mountains mountain range in New South Wales. It has been reported to exist for over centuries. Given the fact that the Lithgow panther is allegedly believed to be a panther, we can presume that it has a carnivorous diet. And because it is a panther, or depicted to be a panther, we can suggest that it can grow to at least 1.6 metres long. The first sighting of the Lithgow panther is unclear, even more so than its actual origins. A common belief is that the Lithgow panther is a descendant of big cats that were released in the area by US soldiers during World War II. Another belief is that it was a circus animal that escaped, but another belief being that the 20th century, but during the 20th century, big cats were illegal to sell in, in the New South Wales area. In 1999, Kevin Sheridan, leader of the Department of Agriculture, wrote to the New South Wales Department of Primary Industries as a request to commission a report and investigation into a mysterious big cat that had supposedly attacked people. In return, the New South Wales Department did claim, did in fact claim that it would be likely that a big cat would be living in these areas and so sent an officer to investigate along with a German Shepherd dog. From 2001 to 3 the NSW State Council carried out investigations discovering scat and hair remains on the ground. Due to this the Moss Vale Rural Land Protection Boards concluded that it was likely of a big cat in the area. In 2002, Lucas Walker, a teenager from Kenthurst, was rushed to intensive care after suffering severe laceration injuries to what he described as a big cat. In 2003, requested by the mayor of Hawkesbury, another investigation was carried out, this time being unsuccessful in finding any evidence of a big cat in the area. In 2011, in the town of Bilpin, an alpaca was brutally killed due to severe blows to the head. An autopsy study revealed that it, it died from 70, 7 cm deep puncture wounds in its skull. Recently, in 2020, video footage has uncovered showing a big cat strolling around the Sydney Adventist Hospital grounds. The Devil Dragon 
The devil dragon is said to be a surviving species of the extinct giant Komodo dragon, Megalania, the largest ground-dwelling lizard ever to walk the earth, and it lived from 125 to 40,000 years ago. For the past 30 years, mysterious disappearances of people have occurred in Australia, and some people think that the devil dragon is to blame. Because of this, the presumed diet of it can be concluded as a carnivore. The devil dragon is obviously based or is Megalania, and Megalania itself could grow up to 5 metres long, as well as having a, point, a venomous bite and massive claws. There have been no sightings for the legitimate devil dragon. However, Megalania was first discovered by Sir Richard Owen, the same English paleontologist who played a part in the theory of the bunyip existing. And, he, and Sir Richard Owen discovered fossils of the Megalania in the River Condamine. The Drop Bear Admittedly, the drop bear is just a hoax and not an actual cryptid that is believed to exist, but will still be talked about. Drop bears are a hoax that scares tourists travelling to Australia, depicting a highly carnivorous koala bear. Normal koala bears are herbivorous animals, but are not actually a species of bear. However, drop bears are carnivorous, actively hunting humans and have razor sharp teeth. Normal koala bears in the wild grow up to 90 centimetres tall and have a maximum weight of 15 kilos. However, when it comes to drop bears, it is worth noting that there are two species, the common drop bear and the mammoth drop bear. Common drop bears grow to under one metre tall and can weigh a maximum of 120 kilograms. Mammoth drop bears, on the other hand, can grow to a staggering five metres tall, nearly on par with the massive giant ground sloth, Megatherium. The drop bear is a hoax, therefore having no sightings, but has indeed been used to scare scout campers about wandering into the woods. The first written use of the word drop bear was in 1982 by the newspaper Canberra Times. This is a, t this is a chart showing the difference between a common drop bear and a mammoth drop bear compared to the average man. As you can see, the mammoth drop bear is something you don't want to come across. In 1981, an Australian band literally named themselves the Drop Bears. The Euroa Beast. The Euroa Beast is an amphibious monster first sighted in 1880 in the town of Euroa in Victoria. It lurks the swamps and rivers of this area. The Euroa Beast is debated ever either to be a beaver or a monitor lizard. If it is indeed a beaver, it is a herbivore, but if it is a monitor lizard, then it is a carnivore. The Euroa beast in the late 1890s sightings have, has been described to be around 9 metres long, or 30 feet. The first sighting of the Euroa beast was in 1880, but there is almost no evidence or, or, or information on this. In 1890, lots of witnesses gathered in the town of Wylanembe, claiming that a beast had been roaming a nearby swamp since the year 1884. In New Zealand, there is a cryptid monster known as the Masterton Monster, and is commonly believed to be related to this Euroa beast. The Gunai the Gunai is a wombat-like creature that has the antlers of a deer and was first sighted during the 1860s in Scotland, but has been sighted frequently in Australia. There is much debate whether it is a hoax or not. The Gunai is said to be a wombat deer creature. Both creatures in the animal kingdom are herbivores, so we can therefore say that the Gunai is likely to be herbivorous and actually completely harmless to humans. However, sightings are scarce, so there is no detail of its actual legitimate size. The Gunai was supposedly first sighted in the 1860s by miners in the central highlands of Scotland, describing it as a rat-like creature with antlers. The first sighting of the Gunai in Australia occurred in 1967 in Camberville, where local timber workers reported to have spotted it near the area. Another Australian sighting occurred in 1999, where Frankie Murphy, an electrician, an electrician from Marysville, claimed to have spotted around 
claimed to have spotted it around 200 metres from where he was working at that time, on someone's property next to a thick bush. However, in 2003, the general pu public started to recognise the Gunai as more, as a more of a hoax, rather than a cryptid, but this is still up for debate and for you to decide. Hook Island Sea Monster the Hook Island sea monster, much like the Gunai, is also in a heavy debate on whether it should be legitimately counted as a cryptid or a hoax. Either way, it was first sighted in 1964. The Hook Island sea monster is often nicknamed the giant tadpole. If it is indeed a tadpole of gigantic proportions, then we can say that it is actually herbivorous, as in the wild, tadpoles fe feast on plants, in the water such as seagrass, duckweed and moss. This would mean that it would actually be completely harmless to humans. The only sighting of the creature however was in 1964 and the person who sighted it claimed it looked to be around 90 feet long which is 27 meters. The only sighting of the Hook Island sea monster took place in 1964 Robert Lesserick and his family had planned to go on a holiday to Hook Island. Whilst on his boat, Robert claimed to have seen a large creature coming towards him. He also stated that when the creature was coming towards him, not only could he see its mouth open, but could also see that its tail was slightly injured. Evidence to support that Robert's claim is fake is that maybe he mistook it for a large row of plastic sheets stuck to the seabed, probably tangled in some seaweed. Another reason being that it could have been photoshopped. Evidence to support that Robert's claim is true, however, is that the supposed creature that Robert saw seemed too lifelike to be mistaken for plastic. And another reason to support it being that the sighting took place in 1964 and Photoshop wasn't invented until 1987. And the fact that it was actually invented in America, all the way on the other side of the world. Either way, this sighting has made people reluctant to swim in the waters of Hook Island. Kayamunu. Kayamunu is another Australian cryptid that has been compared to a dinosaur. Dinosaur. It has been spotted in Papua New Guinea, but also on many islands, with all the sightings occurring south of West New Britain. Kayamunu has often been depicted as being either a Pherizinosaurus, meaning that it would be related to the prosauropod family, or a Velociraptor, meaning it would be part to the, the dromaeosaurid family. This would mean that it is either carnivorous or herbivorous. Kayamunu in most sightings is depicted as being 10 to 15 feet long, which is three to five meters. Kayamunu has been sighted ever since the early 1990s on Amunji Island, whilst also having a couple of sightings on the nearby Aluji Island, a one kilometer difference between the two. From 2005 to 6, two sightings occurred on Amunji Island, the 2005 sighting by a man called Robert and the 2006 sighting by a man called Tony, Tony Aville. In an interview, Robert said that he looked over his, his Dinosaurs and Prehistoric Life book at home and said that the creature he saw closely resembled Pherizinosaurus. The population of Alasia Island, however, is below 300. And this is also featured in one film. Mihirang Panamal. Mihirang Panamal is a flightless bird that supposedly inhabits Western Victoria, Queensland, and New South Wales. Oh my god, how do you pronounce that? The Sajapuring people speak of it as a flightless bird whose name literally translates to the giant bird. Mihirang Panamal has often been compared to two species of extinct flightless bird. These are Geniornis and Dromornis. As well as this, Mihirang Panamal has been put into the Dromornis family, being a flightless bird. If this creature is indeed Geniornis, then we can say that it is roughly six to seven feet tall, which is around two metres. On the flip side of the coin, if this creature is actually Dromornis, then we can say that it is instead around nine feet tall, which is three metres. Although there have been no sightings, legitimate ones anyway, of Mihirang Panamal, the Shijapwuring Aboriginals do say that there have been giant birds inhabiting Australia since around 3000 BC, when loads of volcanoes were erupting. 
cave paintings of supposedly this creature have been found in Cape York in Queensland, as well as rock carvings that have been found in Mootwingee in New South Wales. The Queensland Tiger The Queensland Tiger is a supposed unextinct marsupial lion that is supposedly in inhabiting Australia and has been sighted since the early 1870s with the most recent sighting only happening 10 years ago at the time of this video, video's release. It literally has tiger in the name, guys. But for, for the sake of simplification, the Queensland tiger has almost been confirmed to have a carnivorous diet. The Queensland tiger is almost always compared to the extinct big cat, the marsupial lion. And this is due to the fact that they support the same striped flank as each other. If this is indeed the marsupial lion that has survived at the massive extinction, then we can say that it is uh, that it is around one and a half metres long. With the first ever reports of a tiger inhabiting Australia coming back to 1871, there was a boom of reports in the late 1800s. In 1872, Robert Johnston, a police officer, claimed to have seen a big cat watching him ominously in a tree, around te te <coughs> 10 minutes, 10 metres or so off the ground in Cadwell, and in 1896, a man called Rex Gilroy, who is a cryptozoologist, spoke on behalf of a farmer living in Asterton, who claimed his sheep kept going missing without any possible explanation for it. Following into the 1920s, the general public had had enough. In 1926, a group of dogs killed a cat the size of around a sheep dog, and in newspapers, this murdered cat was dubbed as the tiger, with another tiger being shot dead six years later. In 1950, a group of hikers who were hiking on Mount Stanley saw a red cat with supposed black stripes, and another cat was spotted on Mount Bartle Freery just 18 years after this sighting. In 1969, scientist Gary Opit, along with his brother John Opit, claim to have seen the tiger on Queensland Gold Coast Highway. Just 24 years after this sighting, Mark Warfy Camplin was walking his dog, Rusty, in the Goldsboro Valley, when his dog started to suddenly snarl and growl at nothing, nothing that he could see. The most recent sighting of the Queensland tiger was in 2012, when a woman was driving home at night in the town of Nimbin, when she saw a creature walk in front of her car. She claimed that the creature that walked in front of her car had a striped flank. Although there are no films about the famous Queensland tiger, there is a book written by Larry Jaffa, The Yari or the Queensland Tiger, available on Amazon. The Giants of the Solomon Islands The Giants of Solomon Islands, more commonly referred to as the True Giants, are giant humanoid figures that supposedly inhabit the Solomon Islands, known about from indigenous people and sightings. Although their diet is unknown, we can say that they are often depicted as being 10 feet tall, which is around 3 metres. Whilst indigenous people do tell tales of these creatures, it is worth noting about the history of the Solomon Islands first. The Solomon Islands was first discovered by Alvaro de Manana in 1568, and he named them, upon him discovering it, Islas de Salomon, with the United Kingdom establishing territory rights to the island in 1893. However, during World War II, the Americans were having fierce battles with the Japanese on the Solomon Islands, and it is here where the Japanese soldiers claimed that they were attacked by giant humans. Marius Boy Rayon has been studying the Solomon Islands, including the giants, ever since he married a Solomon Islander, even writing a book about the Solomon Islands, titled Solomon Islands Mysteries. The final cryptid on this list of Australia and Oceania is a quite a famous one, the Yowie. The Yowie is one of the most famous cryptids of Australia, just behind the Bunyip, Queensland Tiger and Budunjaw, and is often nicknamed Australia's Bigfoot, and for good reason. The Yowie is often compared to being a member of the ape family, 
Apes in the animal kingdom are commonly known for having omnivorous diets, so we can say that the Yowie is most likely to eat plants and animals, and is often depicted as being two to four metres tall. According to jour Australian journalist Margaret Mary Jones, the first Yowie sighting took place in 1735, though she doesn't have any evidence to support this. During the 1850s, there had been numerous accounts of a creature being seen in Australia, dubbed as the Yahoo Devil Devil and the Hairy Man of the Wood. Around the same time, a man known as Henry James claimed to have seen an ape-like figure in Batemans Bay. So, Henry was very annoyed by this for some reason, so he set up a ransom for this creature and offered a £40 reward, or 69 Australian dollars, for anyone who could kill it. In 1977, residents of Oxley Island claimed to have heard piercing screeches in the middle of the night, where Rex Gilroy, a cryptozoologist who also played a part in the sightings of the Queensland tiger, jumped to the conclusion straight away of the mythical Yaoi monster. At around the same time, the Queenbian, the Keenbian Festival Board offered a £114,430 reward, or £200,000 Australian dollar reward, for anyone who caught this monster, putting Henry James's ransom up for shame. From 1996 to 2013, many sightings took place in Braidwood, the Brindabella Mountains, Springwood, Queensland and Bexhill, whilst there also being late 1990s sightings in the Acacia Hills in Darwin. Despite all this, Graham Joyner, an Australian historian, has pointed out that he doesn't believe in the Yowie, his reasons being that the creature was only properly thought about by the general public and scientists from 1975 onwards, and the fact that it would be near impossible to sight an ape in busy areas of such as Australia. But that's just him. I'll leave it up to you guys to decide. And the next episode will be Creatures of Africa. And here are the creatures that are planned. Makale Mabembe, Kanyamba, and the Madagascar tree, and a Namibian flying snake. But uh, yeah, this is Cryptids of Australia and Oceania. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe, and stay tuned for Cryptids of Africa.